Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks so much to all the new subscribers on the channel and our existing family down in the comments. We really appreciate it. As always to our Patreon saints who support the channel every single month. The Nintendo Switch has a distinct lack of real first person shooter games and despite Call of Duty finding its way onto other mobile platforms in the past within a year of their release, it doesn't seem to be anywhere for the Nintendo Switch. With this in mind, Gameloft clearly thought that bringing 2014's Modern Combat 5 to the Nintendo Switch was the obvious solution. It's 2019 now, let's find out if they were right. I'm not going to pretend that I was able to disseminate the story from the game itself. I had to go online to do that and find out exactly what on earth was going on. Apparently the World Liberation Army, a terrorist organisation, had attacked Venice to steal chemical weapons held under the United Nations. And that's where you come in. You play as Caden Phoenix, a contractor for the hilariously named Gillingham Security. And his companion, Jonathan Ball Taylor, is suspected of dealing arms and subsequently he loses his job. It's very very much in the same vein as Goldeneye, Taylor goes on to become the story's villain. For England, James. In terms of production values, is about as Hollywood as it comes, with hugely over-the-top voice acting and more pyrotechnics than New Year's Eve. This is more carry-on Goldeneye in terms of its delivery, and as expected, the overall storyline is a convoluted disaster. I didn't expect a Shakespearean tragedy, which is a good thing because I absolutely didn't get one. Controlling your character is probably the best area of the game, with the motion controls turned on. When you decide to aim down the sights of your gun, it's controlled with these. And using the right Joy-Con almost feels like an old light gun game. I found this enabled me to do some quite accurate headshots and it generally felt like a good solution. The rest of the controls are standard first person shooter in that the left stick moves your character and the right your basic camera. The game's divided into several missions which you can select from a hub area. These are split into sections of their own, with different missions taking place on the same map. The game is essentially on rails for all intents and purposes as you are channeled down narrow corridors or placed on the gatlin of a boat and while I don't necessarily have an issue with that, the enemy AI needs to be solid for this to be an entertaining experience. As it is, enemies will pop up like a shooting gallery or charge towards you with little regard for their own lives. If you take too many hits, the screen will begin to turn red. Too many more after that and you obviously die, but hide behind cover until you miraculously begin to heal, as we've seen in so many shooters in the recent past, and you'll be fine. It works well enough and the guns themselves are another good aspect of the game. You can pick up any weapon that's lying on the ground and equip it by holding the Y button. From the loadout screen, you can add several different attachments to your weapons, with new ones becoming available as you progress through the game. In this regard, the game has some loot grind elements to it and playing through the same mission to achieve the top score may net you certain unique parts for your weapons. Much like the aforementioned Call of Duty, the game is filled with set pieces. I understand their inclusion, particularly given the influence that Call of Duty had on the game, they just aren't very fun most of the time and feel very much out of your control. Different weapons have different firing modes and also a variety of unique scopes. The most fun I had with the game was trying to perfect my shooting using the motion controls. As I mentioned, these are really well implemented, which got me thinking about the online mode. I thought to myself, well, I don't really enjoy the single player experience that much, but then I never did with Call of Duty either. So if they carry this level of visual quality and general control over to the online experience, well, we could have a decent game on our hands. And so, we head online. This is where the game really began to fall apart for me. While in single player it's no oil painting, it does look quite nice and polished, and the animations, weapons and overall aesthetic are decent. Online, it's as though it's an entirely different game.
performance is terrible. It chugs along at a miserable frame rate and the other players are animated in such a janky way. The visuals themselves also seem to have taken a large downgrade. What this amounts to then are a group of well-meaning online players running around like headless chickens only to be unable to accurately aim at each other when they do find each other. Even when you get the drop on another player, the lower frame rate means that the motion controls no longer work nearly as well. There are a wealth of different maps, but these are also hugely uninspired when compared to a game like Counter-Strike or even some of the Call of Duty maps that I've played in the past. Now I know the game is a 2014 mobile port, but nonetheless it really feels like a cash-in with little work done to bring it up to the standard that I would deem acceptable for a full-blown console. If it was a single-player experience alone, then I would be saying that the performance and visuals were okay. But I imagine they've marketed at this time to try and hook in some players wanting to have an online first-person shooter, and it absolutely does not do that well. On the contrary, the online mode is an absolute mess, which was a big disappointment to me, despite my already low expectations. And for the final experience to be worse than those, well, it was a shock to say the least. So that's it for gameplay really, in single player it controls well enough, the story is nothing new and it's full of overblown cliche which is fine. The gun controls nicely with motion controls when you're aiming down the sights and there are a large number of missions to take part in which are about as challenging as shooting fish in a barrel but hey, that can also be quite fun. Online the game totally falls apart and it's a real mess. Overall gameplay scores 10 out of 20 due mainly to the okay single player and the semi decent controls. Visually, the game looks okay for one so old and with mobile roots. Gameloft undoubtedly have some really good programmers behind the scenes as it also runs really well in campaign mode, both in docked and handheld. As I've mentioned though, when online, everything changes. It chugs along and the visuals take a major downgrade. There seems to be lag and it just overall is a bad experience. The audio of the game is quite good. Every weapon has its own unique sounds and while I wouldn't call it high res, there are times the game looks lovely. Animations are not particularly good, but enemies running into cover or ducking behind a wall at least gives it some believability. If you held up this game to a person who wasn't around for when the original was released and said to them, what do you think of this? I think they'd still say it looks a bit like a mobile game, and I don't think that would be a compliment. There's no issue with taking inspiration from other titles, but many of the Gameloft titles borrow so heavily that it ends up looking like a knockoff Nigel Market still version of the original title. Overall visual score 8 out of 20, and the audio scores 20. 12 out of 20. The game retails at £19.99, $19.99 or €19.99. I thought to myself, the first thing I'm going to do is check on my iPad to see how much this lovely little game would cost me over there. Guess what I saw? Price, £0, €0 Euros, and $0. But Mark, it costs money to port a game over to the new platform, and you know, fair play, I accept that, which is why I'm going to give value more than 0 out of 20. The single player experience has a lot of content and there is plenty to do here, but the main draw of the game and the reason they've released it so quickly in my opinion is going to be the online mode, and it is absolutely shockingly bad. For me, this is the epitome of a cash in, quite literally, and value scores 3 out of 20. I have absolutely nothing against Gameloft as a company, on the contrary, they revolutionised what you could expect on a mobile phone. But what I do have a problem with, however, is using a four-year-old mobile game to dupe a community looking for a good online experience in the first-person shooter genre. There were moments of semi-enjoyment with this game, but they were brought crashing down to earth when I jumped online. It scores a switch-up score of 36%. I wouldn't necessarily avoid it like the plague, but perhaps it's only really a pickup up if someone else is doing the picking up. Thanks as always for watching, I hope you enjoyed the review, leave a like and a comment if you want to, and for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!